eventually the market starts living, right? Starts living in its reality. Again, we went through 9-11, the market got used to 9-11. We went through the financial crisis, the market got used to the financial crisis. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So the, the market continues to kind of do what we talked about on the weekend video. No matter what uh, the bad news is, and again, we had some more news uh, over the weekend. It's just it's just one big nonstop uh, news cycle. Again, it's very, very fluid situation from minute to minute, uh, hour to hour. So it's very, very tough to kind of harp on one little thing when everything is constantly moving. But uh, the most important part is kind of what the price action is telling us. And we talked about this on the weekend video that eventually the market starts living, right? Starts living in its reality. Again, we went through 9-11, the market got used to 9-11. We went through the financial crisis, the market got used to the financial crisis. We went through the pandemic, still going through the pandemic, the market got used to that as well. So that's exactly what we're seeing here for at least the last three days uh, of uh, last three days of the week. And the most important part is this news cycle is getting more aggressive as slowly but surely the market starts to embrace this news more and more. And now we have three days in a row of continuous buying off of bad news. And that's a very, very important thing. Like, like I said in the video, do I think this is the bottom of the market? It's too early to tell, right? It, it, it's absolutely too early because again, for us to get above the, you know, for us to, to talk about the bottom, right, uh, of the last move in, in the war type of environment, we would have to reclaim the 200 day moving average and we could finally turn around and say, hey, remember that two weeks ago when we finally had the capitulation bottom that's exactly what we need to see and we're not there yet but slowly but surely like again if you believe in technical analysis and all we can do is just take little baby steps you have to like what the market did it had this kind of reversal uh several days ago uh on friday it reclaimed the previous day's high went to the 10-day moving average and today as, as much as the spin cycle news kept on filtering over and over and over again, you got to give the bulls a lot of credit. And the scoreboard is really not going to paint a picture. At one point, uh, the Dow was down 500 points, but the NASDAQ today, the tech heavy NASDAQ, just absolutely went bananas off the open. Uh, Tesla went nuts. Square that we talked about uh, on Friday had a second day uh, earnings run. Really, really aggressive action. And it didn't feel like the same market that we had two weeks ago or three weeks ago, a month and a half ago, when they were talking about potential uh, invasion of Ukraine. And that's kind of the key. It's, it's the most important part is getting rid of the bad news, not you know on the surface, right? It's still gonna be out there. But if the market continues day by day by day to kind of engulf and embrace any type of negative news coming out of uh, the Ukraine situation, then that's gonna be, be a very, very bullish situation. And again, we're not out of the woods. By no means am I saying we're out of the woods. Again, everybody, I, I can't reiterate how important it is to reclaim the 200-day moving average, but if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, you could see here's supply, here's supply. So we have a puncher shot to get to this uh, to get to this 20 day supply. And that's gonna be a very, very important level. Uh, you know, if we can get one more day and get to that 350, 352 level, that's when the bulls are gonna have to really stake a claim because the last three times we got to this supply zone here, we got rejected and we got rejected and we got rejected. So the last thing we wanna see tomorrow is a gap up, right? We don't wanna see a gap up into this 350, 352 level because that is going to be supply. And in a perfect world, we get a gap down open again, okay? We trap shorts again for the third day in a row. We take out today's range and we still have a good four to five points of upside in the queues. And four, if four to five points measures any type of aggressive uh, nature in some of these tech stocks, we can really have another really, really good aggressive day back to the upside. And we'll see, again, again that's the most important part. But the last thing, the reason I say, the last thing the bulls wanna do is have that gap up into this 350, 352 level. That means stocks are gonna be slowly but surely, the ones that mirror the QQQs, 
are gonna be trading right into supply and usually what happens when the stocks get into supply nine out of ten times they're gonna get rejected and we possibly could have a scenario like this right like this so the last thing we want to do I'd rather have this kind of a long churn aggressive organic melt up into supply over the next couple of days hell if they want to stretch it out for two three days to get the cues back into this 352 level that's what we want to see we don't want to see any anything aggressive that it could be a one hit wonder three day rally kind of mirroring what we saw right over here from uh january the 28th uh to march the second the last thing we want to see is that rally the next phase of a dead cat bounce from uh february the 24th into tomorrow uh which is march 1st so it's been very very important to kind of see how we get there and how do we respond to those levels uh because i'll tell you one thing if, if you look at the cues today intraday you had this really let me show you from a five minute point of view you had this really really aggressive move today off the open really really big as the dow was continuing to melt and what was really significant to see and i started talking about this in the webinar i go well you know we've had this three-day run ah man it doesn't look like the bulls are gonna um, muster another rally and this is when we started seeing a really big fade uh into the close and when i went to pick up my daughter and i came you know i came back i started seeing this really really big move uh, on the cues on the way back so the bulls did a great job they could have easily rolled over and we could have had a, a completely different conversation here tonight and say hey look the bulls gave back the 10-day moving average and now blah 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 blah. we're looking for value on the short side so going into tomorrow i'd like to give the bulls at least one more day right one more day of um possible aggressive action tomorrow uh to the upside when we get to this 350 352 level at that point let's definitely reassess kind of where we are we want to see where the headlines are we want to see uh how far the stocks especially are there intraday i want to see how they got there whether it was a gap up or a grind up whatever the case may be so the more information we have going into this 350 352 level then at least we can we have the data in front of us we know where supply zones are and the most important thing is then we can reassess with an eyes wide open scenario instead of hoping and praying and predicting what we think is going to happen uh next so you had some really aggressive moves today uh off the open it, it, we, we wanted I, I knew for a fact I, I wanted at least going into Monday we wanted we talked about this over the weekend it's not like I was 90 10 bull bias but this was the first time I could probably say hey I was 51 49 uh percent bullish just because again just what we have saw going from the the, the five day going to the 10 day and now kind of having a little bit of range going into the 20 day supply so you kind of wanted to see the bulls uh get a little bit leash and that's what they did technology names uh did very very well and you started seeing them pop one by one by one very very aggressive super aggressive especially uh what tesla did so let's talk about them uh these are the pivots uh from this morning uh ttd 85 uh needs to build here is uh ttd here's the 85 whole channel daily channel it traded right to the upper Bollinger Band roughly at 87 again not every trade needs to be uh 50 60 points so that was a nice move there uh AMD we talked about this on uh the video 121 uh 121.30s is Friday's highs it also needs to build this 122 area the, the highs from February the 15th first pop went into this one uh 122.50s level right so the first pop went into the 122.50s level and the next pop went right into the next daily supply of 124.60s hey listen the market continues to rally this thing starts reclaiming 125 why can't this thing get uh to 128 on a bigger push on amd uh square we talked about this any dip on the weekend red to green scenario again right to green guys always just understand it's not a pivot okay the pivot is the previous day's channel uh here is the big number here uh 120 80 121 and square just absolutely exploded into the 50-day moving average you can see here this thing lit up I mean really really lit up all the way uh almost to 132 its next supply again maybe if this thing starts reclaiming 33 it has another channel up a really really big move there and this is the monster I mean, I mean what are you going to say about Tesla 820s is the 60 minute supply I kind of broke down 
uh, the areas of this 60 minute, uh, 820 is a 60 minute supply. So make sure a second entry, also a big number here, uh, 826.50, uh, also interest. And Tesla just went Tesla, right? Tesla went absolutely Tesla. So here is, look at the channel here. So it took out this 820s, it took out the 82650s and just went absolutely nuts. And it went right to this uh, 876, uh, 877 level, which was supply, just a monster. I mean, just an absolute monster move uh, on Tesla. And you can see here, 857 next stop. And it went to 876, just an absolute insane move. Uh, 87 supply, that's where it stopped. Uh, DDOG 162 needs to build. Uh, I said, listen, take some sales into the 165s. That's the daily supply. Uh, here was uh, DDOG, right? Right into the daily, went right to the daily supply uh, into the 165s. Nice pop there on DDOG. Uh, red to green again, square just went absolutely nuts. And this is where I stopped. I said, hey guys, next supply on Tesla, 875, 880, traded to 877. Just an absolute monster move there as well. So that's it. I mean, so that's it. So going into tomorrow, guys, uh, we would like to see uh, a down open. We'd like to see some more shorts being trapped. I would like to see how the bulls handle uh, another day of potential adversity. And the most important part, see where the price action leads us. God bless. Send another prayer for all the folks who are fighting for the freedom of the Ukraine, for the people fighting the Ukraine, and just overall everybody in mankind. Guys, have a great night. God bless. And I'll see you all tomorrow.